blacksmithing was close to becoming a lost art. However, in recent years, it's enjoyed a resurgence of sorts. Why, there's even a TV show and video game all about the art of iron and steel. Well, Tammy Arnder recently met a Fairview blacksmith who took up the trade long before it was cool to do so. Spend all day out here pretty much by myself, except for him. Uh, that's the shop boss. And if, uh, if I screw up, there's only one idiot in the shop. Anthony Martin and the shop boss spend most daylight hours in the Red Tail Forge workshop, a lean-to type barn that provides Martin with all the tools he needs to be a blacksmith. I wanted to work by hand. I didn't want to have presses and, and all the power tools, so I wanted to work by hand. And the more I researched colonial style blacksmiths and the work they did and saw what they could do without any modern conveniences, no electricity, just their brain and their hands, and, and I became a real fan. So I kind of stuck in the 18th century. Anthony is a Georgia boy who moved to Nashville in 1982 to, you guessed it, play music. I was a keyboard player. I'm a guitar owner, but I'm a keyboard player. He worked for several years with the late Mel Tillis, but he said in the late 90s, the music business started to change. Get up every morning, take a shower and get all dolled up, drive to work in the air conditioner and get out and work all day in the air conditioner. And now I get up and take a shower and walk out here and sweat all day. So yeah, it was, it's a just complete left turn. So now instead of tickling the ivories, he's tinkering with iron and steel. When you work, as you know, in the entertainment business, a lot of times you're responsible for stuff that somebody else gets all the credit for. And it's kind of like somebody holding on to your belt. Well, in this, if you do something great, there's nobody to hold you back. You just, you just get to do it, and it's, it's just awesome. Anthony started by making kitchen utensils, just like this ladle. And the boiled peanuts? Yeah, he made those too. Many of Martin's kitchen items can be seen on the syndicated TV show, Taste of History, with Chef Walter Stabe. For Anthony, each piece must have a purpose. I'm not an art guy. I mean, really, I'm just not an art guy. I like to do pieces that when you get, you go, oh, this is awesome, and I'm going to use it. You know, I want people to use what I do. Anthony often gets asked to make period pieces for national historic places like the Polk House or the Hermitage. One of the things we'll do today, we'll be going to the Customs House in Philadelphia, which I think Jefferson called it the most genteel tavern in America. And Civil War reenactors love his handmade weapons. He admits he had to do his research and a few trial by fire moments to get the weapons just right. Get it too hot and you hit it and it looks like hitting a brick, it just powders. If it's not hot enough, nothing ever happens and you make cracks in it. If you don't quench it right, it doesn't work. There's so many things that go into making knives and weapons. Anthony isn't the only creative one at Red Tail Forge Works. His wife has a talent for upcycling odds and ends. My wife calls herself a very trashy lady because she goes through people's discarded things, everything from shoes and knickknacks to silverware, and picks out the neatest stuff she can find and creates wind chimes out of them. The two seldom meld their crafts, except for the occasional horseshoe he'll toss her way. Martin keeps his business separate. He very rarely makes anything that didn't have its rightful place in the 1800s. Even the anvils and hammers appeared to come over on the Mayflower. Even the hand pump blower has a patent date of 1850. The primitive and never pristine workspace of a blacksmith seems to fuel Anthony's desire to design with iron. Even through blazing temperatures in an unair conditioned shed, he can spend hours pelting melting steel. I'll bring a piece of steel up red, and you're gonna think that's hot. But it's gonna to drop to this color and it's still gonna be 800 degrees. 
Despite the constant heat, he says the creative outlet it provides is worth the sweat, the satisfaction of that final hit with the hammer that seals the deal. That last little twist that puts the finishing touch on the fireplace set that will sit in a home once occupied by one of our presidents. Anthony can't really say if it's the finished product or the process, but much like music, blacksmithing at times has got a rhythm. The rise and fall of the blower, a sort of groove as he moves from fire to forge, the downbeat of the hammer. For Anthony, the backbreaking work is worth it. Physical labor, which is, I grew up kind of like you, I grew up on a farm, and I've always loved physical labor. It doesn't bother me at all. Most days, this is much less like work than being in the music business.